Hello and welcome to the LOTC BC Report. Let's get straight into this week's headlines. Talenter reveals a soon-to-be-released combat revamp as the first stage of Nexus. Last week's survey results are in, and Sparrow Cakes has a few things to say about it. And Rhea has yet another leaked picture with more news onto it. Felony revealed that as a part of the first Nexus patch, he would be releasing Nexus Combat. This would lengthen the duration of combat and thus no longer permit spam-clicking combat in PvP. This is said to make things like dodging, blocking, and timing attacks worthwhile. It will introduce a delay for equipping armor and changing weapons. It will also improve the overall physics of the game, so that armored people will no longer be able to sprint, swim, or fire from bows. Finally, it also adds attack cooldowns that lower the attack once per second. Not only that, but the Nako plugin is on the verge of being re-released. This very week, maybe. And VIP perks are being worked on by the team. Watch out for updates coming to your VIP status. Time for a great general assembly with all the admins and GMs. On this meeting's agenda is the all the things every single feedback topic. Every single gripe and moan, every singe, everything including horses, VAs, improving transparency, and future developments. And with that, Rhea has treated us to another sneak peek of this huge thing that the team is preparing. Viper has added that he will soon be released to the player base. Look closely at the picture, you will find something that may be unexpected. It is sad to see a GM step down, but Wodehouse has resigned from the GM team. With another spot opening for global moderators, it's a good time to be watching your application. Another space has also arisen from the four moderators. As of this week, Kodo has resigned. The VAT are still going into their long-awaited meeting. There will be a lot to discuss, and you can expect all the updates on this show next week. The media team is working on an updated trailer for the release of the North. Another one that will be bigger, better, and more relevant. Expect an epic cinematic experience. An update on last week's news about the opening of the North is that the teams are pushing it through as best they can, but ran into some issues with the Mob Spawner plugin that delays the release. The inside word is that Wither Skeletons with Iron Swords will be spawning there commonly, so watch your back. Warfare strikes Anthos once again. Multiple attacks and threats have been made between descendant races despite the antagonist threat. Even after a raid of Abressi, the people of Anthos bicker and spill blood without reason. The Wood Elven Nationalist Legion has launched a war claim upon Halinor. This caused much bickering over the terms of the war claim and thus has been postponed until the release of Nexus to give the magic users a chance to fight back. Relations have been tense between the leaders of the Elves and the Orcs for a matter of a High Elven child. High Princess Titania has been investigating the situation, but as of yet, no actions have been made. It is still unclear as to why the girl remains of interest to a select group of shamans, and those who do know reserve a tight lip on the matter. Another attack in Silvis involving the orcs, as tension remains physical between the two nations. A war could be on the horizon, with neither force looking to back down soon. Between the Black Scourge and the Orc Raids, Selvis doesn't seem to be a safe place these days. The results of last week's survey were revealed to show some clear area for improvement, as well as some fairly positive feedback on how staff teams are tracking along. There were some much less attractive responses in the survey, but to discuss further what these numbers mean is Sparrow Cakes himself. Mr. Sparrow Cakes, what are some of the trends that these survey results showed about the server? The only real trends that went across the board were just the lack of communication between the staff and the player base. I think that's what the players want fixed for the most part. The thing in the survey that came as a complete surprise was the fact that the general survey had probably double the amount of responses that the staff one did. I figured the community would much rather reply to something about the staff rather than the just overall survey, but it doesn't look like that was the case. Most of the results are pretty negative. People like to rip into people when they know they can get away with it. But not including those, I think about 50% of the feedback was pretty valid, whether they gave recommendations on how to fix things or whatever else. But even less than that was awesome and constructive and just amazing feedback, and that is what the staff is mainly focusing on. There was not a lot of love for the admins. Why do you think that is? Mainly, I just think the community sees GMs like Ever, Freya, Rhea, and a few other GMs that are awesome, doing Modrex and things like that, and they appreciate that. They're kind of like the front line of the staff, 
Whereas admins are kind of on the back lines and doing behind the scenes things and they aren't doing as many things that the player sees. So I feel like they kind of maybe got targeted through the survey because you don't see what they're doing often. If we could give the community what they want, then the community would give the staff what we want and it would just be an easy, awesome server. It seems the results weren't enough though. Ever followed up recently with a great bombshell post expressing the stress that it's forced upon staff, specifically GMs. Much was said, much was relevant. Danny quickly followed up with a post which spoke about the future of the server, and we encourage you all go read that and make what you will of it. That's it for this week. Be here Saturday next week for the next edition of the LOTC Report. This was Calamine. And I'm Dizzy771. See you all in Anthos.